Okay, so today the topic is moment of force, right? I think uh, you already uh, got to know what is moment of force, uh, especially and more specifically in your older right? In your older science, you uh, had studied a moment of force. So uh, what is a moment of force? Uh, so we can say the turning effect of a force is known as the moment, okay? Or we can call a moment of force. Um, so you can write down, uh, write down the topic moment of force. The turning effect of a force is known as the moment Okay, it is the product of the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot or point where the object will turn. Now, for example, if I take an object like this, okay, and let's say there is a pivot point. Okay, I call that point O. And uh, let's apply a force. Let's apply a force F. So this object will now tends to rotate about the point O, right? So this is a pivot point. And uh, here we have to consider the uh, distance, perpendicular distance to that force from the pivot point, okay? So, let's say the distance, perpendicular distance. So if I consider distance to be like that, it is not correct. It has to be perpendicular, right? By definition, it is a perpendicular distance, okay? So I'll indicate that is perpendicular here, okay? And let's take this distance to be simple D, okay? Um, then I can write the torque is equals to force times uh, perpendicular distance to the line of action from the uh, point of pivot, okay? So we have to consider this distance. The moment of force is also called as torque, right? I hope you already know that. So torque is equals to force times perpendicular distance between the force and pivot. So pivot means this point where it uh, rotates. So torque is equals to F times D. So you may write down these things, draw this picture, uh, name this force F and this distance, perpendicular distance symbol D. Therefore torque is equals to force times perpendicular distance between force and pivot. So this is the perpendicular distance between force and pivot. So we usually uh, use the symbol tau as torque, right? So tau equals force times simple t. Okay. Draw this picture and write down tau equals force times the perpendicular distance.
Okay, so and uh, what is the unit of torque? I mean, the moment of force. What is the unit? Can you tell me? Newton meter. Very good. Newton meter. So unit is Newton meter because force has unit of Newton and uh, distance has unit of uh, meter in SI unit. So the unit of torque becomes Newton meter. And uh, tell me whether torque or moment of force is a scalar quantity or vector quantity. Is it a scalar quantity or vector quantity? Well, uh, the moment of force is a scalar quantity. Sorry, vector quantity. Okay. So write down torque is a vector quantity. It's a vector quantity. Now uh, we know what is what are scalars and vectors, right? So scalars in the sense, they have only a magnitude, right? But a vector, they have both magnitude and direction. So magnitude can be calculated by this formula. The torque equals force times uh, perpendicular distance. So if we know the value of force and the perpendicular distance to the force from the pivot, so we can calculate the torque, right? But what about the direction? Because it's a vector, it should have a direction, right? So next thing, let's see what is the direction of the torque. So write down the topic, the direction of torque. The direction of torque, okay. Okay, so here the force, force is in this direction and this is the distance, okay. Or uh, rather than call distance, I can better word should be displacement, right? Uh, yeah, in your note, so you have to draw a rough sketch of this, draw a small picture. Even if you can draw just the arrows, it's fine, okay. No need to draw the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so draw this and name uh, this direction is force. And here use uh, displacement. Or you can uh, either better, you can use displacement or position vector, or radial distance rather than distance. It's better you can use uh, displacement. Use here displacement and here torque. Because here distance is a, a scalar. Right, but uh, according to mathematics, like vectors, they should be a uh, vector. All these terms should be vectors. Now, I'm not going to that deep. Now, it is like a mathematics in vectors. So, just uh, have an insight that if three uh, physical quantities are related from an equation, and they all in perpendicular direction. Now this is perpendicular to this, this perpendicular to this, and force is perpendicular to torque. So if they are in perpendicular direction to one another, then all these three quantities must be a, a vector quantity according to vector cross product. So I use the word cross product that is mathematics. So all thing all you should know is if there is uh, three physical quantities related in an equation, as we wrote down, uh, torque equals force times uh, the perpendicular distance. But here, this is a, uh, so you may write displacement, it's better word. So here, these three should be a vector quantity, okay? Draw this quickly.
Okay, I hope you have finished drawing this figure. Okay, so the direction is, now we can see it's vertically up. If the force is in this direction and distance is this direction and torque is in this direction. And to find the direction of the torque, we can use something called a right-hand rule. So here's the right-hand rule. So here we take our right-hand rule, uh, as you can see here. So I take this right-hand rule and pointing in the direction of the uh, displacement or the radial distance r. So I take this line, keep along with r, okay, along with the distance, and then this forefinger. You can see this forefinger, I have to fold in the direction of the force, right? Then the thumb gives the direction of the, uh, the thumb gives the direction of the torque. So we can use right hand rule to find the direction of the torque, right? Okay, so just uh, quickly draw this. Uh, first, you can take a screenshot in case if you couldn't finish drawing, so you can uh, complete that later to the class. Okay, so we can use right hand rule to find the direction of the torque. Now physics is very simple if we understand the basic uh, basics well, right? Because everything is built of basic principles. So if you understand the basic principles well, so we can do any uh, difficult or any problem. Okay, and then uh, let's see what are the applications of torque. Uh, now here, let's consider most of the applications in day-to-day -day life, such as one thing we can see. Uh, so we can use such thing to uh, tight or loose the bolt, right? Now wake a wheel, you may have seen this, right? Now, for example, if you consider like a bus wheel, the wheel bolts are very uh, uh, hard to uh, rotate so that they will use small uh, metal tube and they use to get the extra uh, torque, right? So um, this is one example. So now here we want to consider, now this is the axis of rotation Right, or the pivot point, and the force is applied vertically downward. So we can measure the distance of this, right? So, and here we want the uh, perpendicular distance. Therefore, we had to consider this distance. So I hope you have, uh, you may have learned uh, vector resolving. So like this is, this distance is, or else we can use a simple geometry here. This distance is d, therefore this distance will be d cos theta, d into cos theta, since this angle is theta. So here in this case, the torque will be f into d cos theta, okay? Okay, that is one example. And the other one, other example is uh, dou. Now, if we consider the dou, now we here use this point, uh, the holder, I mean, we use to uh, close or open the door about from this point. In this world, you never find at any home or any place, any workplace, this thing is somewhere like here or here, but it is at the uh, end corner from a uh, far end from the pivot axis, right? So this is where it is connected. So it is rotate about this one. So we you keep this uh, far end from this axis to make it uh, easier, right? So you may try this. You can uh, try to close a draw from this end. Try it and see 
it may be very difficult compared to here, right? Okay, that's another example. And uh, using a spanner, right? So to tight or loose the bolt, we use a spanner. So here is also a torque principle is used. And uh, pulling a metal around. So here the axis of uh, axis point, I mean the pivot point. So this distance in polar and the force F, therefore torque will be X into R. And riding a bicycle. So there are two we can find the torque is applied. So here, uh, if you can see the torque, torque will be x pin two. Now they take this angle theta, but therefore we want to consider this length. So this length will be uh, r sine theta. So in this case, the torque will be f r sine theta. Okay, so you may take a small screenshot of this, right? And uh, in your note, you may write down uh, applications of uh, torque. So under that list down these things. Uh, so you first you can use uh, riding a bicycle, like you can list down by a sentence, right? And uh, dodo and these things. And if you have time, if you want to make your note be beautiful, so you can draw these pictures along with those things. Okay, but drawing is not so necessary. Okay, take a screenshot. And the next topic, okay. So let's see an example, right? So example of torque. So here a pivot point and a force is applied 10 Newton and this distance is 0.5 meter. That means uh, 50 centimeter. Um, so here, uh, find the torque of this system. Okay, I'll give you a minute. You can try this in your textbook and then I will do it. Uh, if you got the answer, uh, you can tell and more than tell the answer. Five Newton meter upwards. Five Newton meter, very good. So let's see. So the force is 10 Newton. So 10 Newton multiplied by the perpendicular distance to that force from the pivot point, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 meter, right? So we get 10 into 0 0.5, 5, 5 Newton meter. Okay, good. So our next topic, write down the topic, uh, net torque due to a system of forces. Net torque 
due to a system of forces. Net torque due to a system of forces. Okay, so suppose let's say we have a, a system of forces acting on a rigid uh, body. So a rigid body in the sense, uh, a body which does not change its shape or volume by the influence of force. So such an object we call rigid body in mathematics or in physics, okay? So here we have a rigid body, right? So we have applied some forces, F1, F2, and F3. And here's the pivot point, which is O. And the, uh, the perpendicular distance says D1, D2, D3, respectively. Now we want to find the net torque, net torque of this system, right? So the net torque of the system is given by the algebraic sum of the torque, uh, algebraic sum of torques by each forces. Now, due to this force, we have uh, torque F1, D1. And due to this one, we have F3, D3. And due to this one, we have F2, D2, right? Now, now uh, earlier we talked about the uh, this direction. So direction of the force, right? So, uh, torque has a direction, suppose the force is in this direction, the torque will be vertically upward. Now tell me what if I change the direction of the force to this side? Okay. What if I change the direction of the force to this side instead of this? What is the direction of the force now? I mean the torque. Now force is in this direction. You can use the right hand rule. Use the right hand rule and find the direction of the torque. What is the direction you get if you use the right hand rule? Now you have to take this one, keep along with the uh, uh, the displacement, okay? The perpendicular distance, you have to keep along with that. And then you have to fold this in the direction of force. But if I fold like this, right? It becomes uh, in the opposite direction of the force. So that what I have to do is I have to change my hand this direction. So this one now, along with this force will be there and now folded to this side, then the torque will be vertically downward. So in this sense, uh, the force becomes in the opposite direction, right? Now, the, if the force is in this direction, right? If the force is in this direction, let's say torque is up, it's upward, let's say torque, right? Now, if I change the direction of the force by keeping the value constant, what happens, the torque will be in other direction. So in that case, the torque will be minus torque to indicate that direction is opposite. 180 degree changed, right? So we get minus here. Is that clear? Zainab, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So now we can see by, uh, if the direction is in the other way direction, so uh, torque is uh, negative. So you may uh, put in a note this, you can note down this, right? So I will give the note like this, okay? So you write down, if the force is in uh, anti-clockwise, suppose the torque, um, okay, hold on. 
Now we can say, um, suppose anti-clockwise torque is positive, right? So this is making anti-clockwise the initial previous one. Suppose the anti-clockwise torque is positive, then clockwise torque will be negative, okay? If the uh, clockwise torque is positive, then the anti-clockwise torque will be negative. Vice versa, if you consider this direction is positive, if you consider this direction is positive, then other direction will be negative. It's up to the, your choice, right? But uh, if you consider this direction positive, then you must consider other direction is negative, okay? Okay. So I hope you wrote, uh, suppose the torque on uh, clockwise, anti-clockwise direction is positive, then anti-clockwise uh, direction will be negative. Okay. okay. So let's get back to where we were. Okay. So the net torque of the system is the algebraic sum of torques uh, of the system, okay? Um, let me write down this, hold on. It's better if I can put here, algebraic sum of torques of each force. Force of the system. Okay. Okay. So write down the net torque of the system is the algebraic sum of torques of each force of the system. So now I can write down. Um, by the way, our meeting will be in with another ten minutes. Okay. So in case it was. And uh, you may uh, join back to the same link, okay? Okay. So write down the net torque of the system is the algebraic sum of torques of each force of the system. So here I can write the torque. Yes, radius equipment. And so I can write the torque. Uh, it's not T, it's a torque, right? You know, tau it's a Greek letter. Tau. Now here I'm going to have to consider a direction, right? So we know tau is a vector. So I want to consider a direction. So I'm going to consider a, in, let's say here we can see the forces. So here most of them are like in uh, anti-clockwise. So I'm going to consider anti-clockwise direction. So we put something like this to indicate that we are considering anti-clockwise direction, right? So that is equals to, now first we have F1, D1. So let's write F1 into D1. And then what we have next? And we have F2. But we have F2 is making a clockwise uh, movement, right? It makes a clockwise movement, but we are considering anti-clockwise, right? So here, this one will be then minus, right? So I put here a minus F2 D2. Okay, and finally we have uh, F3, which is in the same direction that we have considered. So that is F3 plus D3. Okay, write down this uh, equation. So this is how we calculate uh, the torque due to a system of forces acting on an object.
Okay, and now uh, let's do some examples. Before we are going to force couple, I write some examples. So uh, let's start with this one, find the top of this one. You can write down examples of questions and then you can start uh, writing this and find the answer. And uh, try to do all the questions. If you got the answer, you can put it in the chat. So first put A and then its answer. And let's see whether it's correct. Okay, now I want uh, both of you to put your answers in the chat. Also mention whether it is a uh, clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, okay? Okay, 12 Newton meter, that is correct. Tell me whether it's in a uh, clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. Well, uh, this is uh, in anti-clockwise direction, right? So here um, you can say, so this is answer 12 Newton meter, correct? And it's in anti-clockwise direction. Even though we mark uh, the torque in anti-clockwise or clockwise, but the torque is not that, right? The torque is uh, actually, uh, as we discussed earlier, So torque is either in this direction or this direction, but as we considering this uh, clockwise or so anti-clockwise, it gives an idea about the direction, right? So if it's the net torque is in uh, anti-clockwise direction, then torque will be vertically upward. And if the uh, net torque in uh, clockwise direction, then torque will be in downward direction. So by considering the clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, that gives an idea about whether the torque is vertically up or in downward direction, right? Now in questions like finding the torque, we usually write down the uh, torque by considering the uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise direction as, we, uh, as I wrote earlier, something like this. Okay, so the answer for the first one is correct and it is in uh, anti-clockwise direction. And uh, tell me the answer for the B part. Uh, 